I mean, in every jurisdiction that assisted suicide has been brought in, there have been changes, whether that's through legislation or through practice. Um, and, you know, she's absolutely right. You know, palliative care is a postcode lottery, but Australia is one example. They've you know, massively cut the funding into palliative care because this is a cheaper and quicker option. And Canada, which a lot of proponents of the bill are now stepping back from because the expansion has been so rapid. I've actually written a report about how much money it saves uh, Canada in terms of having assisted suicide as, as an option. And I think, you know, when we talk about vulnerability, you know, choice is a really difficult thing. I spend a lot of time arguing uh, for choice for disabled people. But if they feel that all their choice is being taken away because they haven't got access to housing, education, employment, transport, then they feel that they have no choice to, you know, but to go down this route. And, you know, there's examples out in Canada where, you know, if you're anorexic, you would technically have six months to live at a certain point in your treatment. And it's been given um, for, for that, you know, in, again, Canada, if you're homeless, if you're poor, poor is um, a reason to request it. So there's there's a lot of worry out there about how this law could expand if it comes in, because there's already campaign groups saying it doesn't go far enough. It, we need to have euthanasia. You know, we need to have, um, you know, no restrictions whatsoever. We need to remove the six month general diagnosis. That's before we've even got to this stage.